Community Garden Once upon a New York minute, there was a tiny seed planted in a neighborhood garden in the heart of New York City. The seedling was watered and cared for by the community, and with every drop of water and every ray of sunshine, it began to grow. Roots sprouted, swirling and twirling through the soil to make a strong home for the sprout. Each day, a new friend came along to water the garden, and each day the seedling grew taller and stronger until it pushed through the surface of the garden and its leafy stem formed a flower bud. Then the flower bud shook its head and unfurled its unique petals and beautiful colors for all the world to see. Can you count how many petals the flower has? Even in the toughest of storms, this flower stands tall because of its strong roots. When the storm passes, and they always do, the sun comes out and nurtures the garden to help it thrive again. Each plant in the garden is important and has a different job. The trees provide shade and homes for animals, the flowers nectar feed the bumblebees, the vegetables nourish families. Together, they form a garden community. Communities, too, work together and support each other through clouds and sunshine, every step of the way. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Children's Aid Virtual Benefit. The human beatbox known as Doug E. Fresh and I go for more and not for less. See, my rhymes are good as gold in the treasure chest and to represent children aids I got dressed. Jack of all trade rhyme tailor made. Much love and respect to the children aid. Now, some of y'all ain't heard that song in a while, but this time we're doing it beatbox style. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
love to the children aid. I've been down with y'all since first grade. Always and forever. Love y'all and appreciate everything you do. Thank you for making me a part of this celebration. I grew up in the heart of Harlem in the 1990s, and I found myself walking through children's aid stores at seven years old for summer camp. I'm now living my dream as a legal and compliance associate at Cinebridge Partners, a New York-based multi-strategy investment advisory firm. My name is Tariq McDermott, and I'm a children's aid kid. In 1984, I was approached by Dr. Michael Carrera at Dunleavy Milbank Center in Harlem, New York. He was starting a sex education teen pregnancy prevention program and he was looking for students. That was awesome. That changed my life. Today, I'm a chiropractor and a full-time assistant professor of biology. My name is Dr. Hazel Aberdeen and I am a children's aid kid. I grew up in Harlem and first discovered the Children's Aid Society when I was 11 years old. I am now the Chief of Homeland Security and Intelligence for Washington, D.C. I attribute so much to Children's Aid. The program clearly makes a difference in people's lives. Most of my childhood friends are dead or in jail or living in extreme poverty. Children's Aid helps break down the barriers to education and that's been the key to my success. My name is Danelle Harvin, and I'm a children's aid kid. Good evening and welcome to the 2020 Children's Aid Virtual Benefit. My name is Natasha Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us. Let's get started with Children's Aid President and CEO Phoebe Boyer. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. When you take the challenges our families have always faced, food insecurity, the digital divide, education inequity, compound them with a global pandemic, and then lay bare the painful realities of systemic racism, it can be pretty overwhelming. In March, when I was asked if Children's Aid could go remote, 2,000 staff spanning 150 programs across five boroughs, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure we could do it. Our funding pays for much of our staff, but it doesn't cover the tools we need to do our jobs. I knew we could get devices to our families, but how could we serve them if our staff didn't have the laptops of their own? Remote learning and telemedicine, deep cleaning and PPE, these were not our standard operating procedures but with 50,000 children and families across New York City depending on us, we had to find a way, and that's exactly what we did. We made sure none of our families went hungry. We kept our health centers open so our kids could avoid overtaxed emergency rooms. We worked across government agencies to place more than 100 foster kids in loving homes. But the most important work we've done over the past six months has been to rebuild the trust that's been lost among New York families who feel forgotten, unseen, and expendable. When people say New York is over, it's clear to me they don't know our families. The dad who says, we don't need the box of food this week, give it to another family. Or the mom dropping off her children at our early childhood center, masked up and ready to go so they won't fall behind. And they don't know our facilities team who drove all over the state picking up our foster kids when the college is closed to keep them out of shelters. It has been nothing short of extraordinary to be on the leading edge of our city's response to the pandemic, to give our children and families a sense of hope when they need us most. This virus has already taken so much. We cannot also allow it to rob us of future leaders. At Children's Aid, it is our job to ensure their possibilities are endless and their roots are strong. And none of that would be possible without you. Thank you once again for joining us. 
The Children's Aid Youth Arts Initiative brings otherwise inaccessible arts programs to our city's most under-resourced neighborhoods. At IS318 in the Bronx, students are building their creativity and establishing stronger social connections through music. Meet teaching artist Dandri Carrasco and student Joshua Medina. I remember when we first met, mm -hmm. it was an after school. Mm -hmm. You came with Justin, you know, he was very quiet. Mm -hmm. He was in sixth grade and, mm -hmm. and, and Justin told me, oh, he played the piano. Mm -hmm. At the time I was, same thing, music specialist. Mm -hmm. You know, but when I first met you, the best thing about you was that you welcome anyone, you know, come as you are. Anyone's welcome. It doesn't matter if, it, if it doesn't matter if you do rock, it doesn't matter if you do hip hop, it doesn't matter if you do reggae, you're Spanish, you know. Everyone's welcome, you know, we find a way. And, uh, and that was the best thing. And ever since that day, you know, I've been, I've been open, you know, like exp experimenting with music, you know. It wasn't until like a few, few months later, Wait, right, stuff got started getting personal, you know. It's like after that, you know, I started getting better, 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 and you know. And I remember that you didn't like to socialize a lot when you first came to the school. I feel like all that really just came from just being insecure of myself, you know. Sometimes I got shy, and uh, sometimes, you know, I stutter, and I just decided to, you know, sometimes stay quiet. How do you think about my relationship, which you like help to to for you to overcome that? <laughs> Everything, you know? Music is like a, a therapist, you know? And I use music, you know, as a way to communicate myself because, you know, you just put down your feelings and, it, you know, it really could help you or make, you know, make you feel better, you know? Just keep it mellow, just keep it mellow, just keep it mellow, just keep it mellow. She's like an arrow, like an arrow, yeah, like an arrow, yeah, like an arrow. <laughs> they are out there. You can find them if you look hard enough. They ride bikes, buses, and subways. Some work under masks and gloves, and some behind plexi screens. Somehow showing us life goes on. They are the essentials. They work so that our community will continue to grow. Staying up late to find new ways to adapt and waking up early so that our children can learn. If you can't see any of them from where you are, look inside your own home because you too are essential. Now more than ever, in these times when we need to act on what's right. Every person of every community, every child, family, and dream is essential. And with your help, Children's Aid will continue to work tirelessly to prove it. Every step of the way. Please welcome to the program a Children's Aid Youth Ambassador from the Bronx, Stella Mars Rafua. Hello, my name is Stella Maris Rafua and I attend Medgar Evers College. I would not have been here today if it was not for Children's Aid. I had the grace to get into college, but I struggled to find where I belonged. I am Nigerian by birth and within our culture, girls are prepared for marriage at a young age but I wanted to be educated and I wanted to travel. Due to that, I was an outcast to my family. I struggled in school and I built up a lot of anger. Everything I touched crumbled into pieces. One day I got into a heated argument in the hallways of Fannie Lou Hammer High School. I don't remember what the argument was about, but I'm pretty sure I started it. Danny Morris walked outside of the children's aid office and said to me, you would be great for student government. I thought he was crazy. He chased me for weeks and for months talking to me about it. 
He stationed himself outside of my classroom. And finally, I thought, why not? I'm not doing anything else with my time. I fell in love with children's aid. With their support, I started taking AP classes. I ran track to channel my anger. And I also found the family within my teammates. My mother wouldn't pay for my college, but through children's aid, I got a scholarship. When I say I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for children's aid, I wouldn't be alive. I was very close to committing suicide, but children's aid gave me the strength to be who I am. I used to ask why I had to endure so much at a young age, but now I realize it made me who I am today. I am black, I am a woman, and I am a lesbian. I'm not mad. I am grateful for everything that has happened in my life. Children's Aid helped me mold myself into a better person. I believe everything happens for a reason. Thank you. Please welcome from Harlem Children's Aid's Youth Ambassador, Miles Dawson. Hi, my name is Miles, a senior at Beacon High School and aspiring CEO of my media production empire. I grew up in Harlem, surrounded by the memories of black pioneers and trailblazers. My life is largely defined by three things. One, art. I was an artistic kid. Our photography class is what sparked my current business. Two, I'm an athlete, and basketball is my primary sport. Three, I was nine years old when Trayvon Martin was killed. After Trayvon's death, I was surrounded by loving people, but I started to wonder, do I matter? Now that I'm evolving from a young black boy into a young black man, it is clear how many traps there are that can stand in the way of my success. I first encountered Children's Aid while working at the Millbank Community Center in Harlem. I was welcomed with open arms by everyone there. I feel like a part of the family within a week, which is unusual for an introvert like me. The program coordinator, Yamila Rivero, has been a big supporter since I met her. In her Smarty Arty program, I learned more about different fields of media, like journalism and advertising. I also got the opportunity to network for my business, where I take photos for aspiring models, make music videos, and document events like the protests that took place this summer. Children's Aid nurtured a drive inside of me. They also gave me the chance to do that for others. I coached basketball at Millbank Summer Camp. The little kids who couldn't reach the hoop had a sense of defeat. But when you hold them up and they make the shot, you can see the raw emotion on their faces. I see the positive impact I can be on them. Each kid has what I taught them forever. They could change, the world could change. In that small way, I can counteract the barriers of being a black boy in America. I matter. Like my role models, LeBron James and Tyler Perry, I want to give back to my community. There are a lot of young creative minds in my neighborhood who could use a mentor, like the people at Children's Aid were for me. Thank you. <laughs> All it takes is for one seed to be planted and a garden of hope will bloom inside your chest. Root stems will embrace your heart warmly and tightly, stretch itself to every crevice of your fingertips and toes, climb its way up your throat and a flower will sprout from your lips. Its yellow petals will gently sway in the wind and on the days when you feel like you cannot withstand the sun and heat or the cold and rain, the roots that are tied to the bones of your toes will anchor you to this sacred ground of faith and miracles. Now you're ready to take on the world. Did you know that you are a hero? You are the voice of the future. No, you are the future. You single-handedly screamed George Floyd's name so loud that the world stopped and listened. You outgrew the weeds in your garden and threw daffodils at the voices of those that tried to silence you. Do you see now how powerful you can be if you just believe that all it takes is one seed and you will feel the warmth of the tide roots that anchor you to earth. Its white stem will dance its way towards your heart, wrap itself around it in intricate patterns 
and keep you standing tall on the windiest days. Good evening, and thank you for your tremendous investment in our work here tonight. As you've heard, Children's Aid has accomplished a lot over the past six months. 60,000 food boxes for families in the Bronx, Harlem, Washington Heights, and Staten Island. 10,000 mental health contacts via teletherapy and video conferencing. 10,000 books donated, packaged, and delivered to children across the city. The list goes on and on. But what I really want to leave you with tonight is that our strength and success during this unprecedented time is not because of six months of hard work. It's because of nearly 170 years of service. It's because of an unparalleled commitment to putting children first, no matter what. At Children's Aid, we don't just see the need, we act on it. Whether that means being one of the only foster care agencies to keep taking kids COVID positive or not, or leveraging our leadership to insist our government deliver a plan for summer learning loss. A lot of people see the gaps, but at Children's Aid, we stand shoulder to shoulder with our families and work to fill them. By standing in the gap, we are mitigating the damage of social injustice. We're fighting the impact of widespread unemployment and serving as a desperately needed buffer in the face of great trauma. We simply could not do this without you. Your investment here tonight says that you care just as much about the future of our families as you do your own. In a time when so much of the world is preaching us versus them, at Children's Aid, we are saying our. We don't talk about those people or those neighborhoods. These are our kids. This is our city, our future. And we couldn't build it without you. Having grown up in the Bronx, I'm a New Yorker through and through, no matter where my roots are planted. It's organizations like Children's Aid that make this city thrive. Just look at all of the amazing things that they're doing. To help them continue their work, please utilize the donate and text to give options above and give generously. Every dollar counts. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce a talented youth performer from Children's Aid, Tyrese Avery. Thank 
you everyone for joining us tonight. We look forward to the next time we all gather together in person. Be safe and be well. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.